I just found a coin metal detecting that absolutely geeked me out. All right, so this is what we see. Commerce, credit, my victory, bank. Yeah, that says down with the bank. And that looks like an 18, 18 something down here. For the other side, the US bank, what the hell is this? I've never even heard of this coin. Thoughts were going through my head about stuff that I learned in school and even stuff that I taught in school but stuff that is largely overlooked. What is this? And to perfectly understand today, if that is possible, you need to understand the battles of this era. Andrew Jackson, the all-American Dos Equis guy. Heck, Dos Equis president. He was wildly popular and cut from a different cloth than the presidents that preceded him. He was the first president that was arguably self-made in that he did not grow up with ownership of land. Uh, he grew up poor. And you have to remember, with the first iteration of American democracy, you had to be a landowner in order to vote. And that, of course, did not apply to many people. When suffrage expanded from the original definition, it made Andrew Jackson appeal to other common men at the time. Sadly, as we know, it took women and non-whites a much longer time. He was a general who was buried with multiple bullet wounds, many of which were from dueling, calling his opponent out testing their manhood. He was also a test to the concept of checks and balances in that he gravitated towards what he got when he led his armies. Absolute power. We're going to take a close look at this coin in a minute, but first look at this. Make it a few minutes. I kind of like... Meh, 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 meh. So it's a 1834 running bore hard times token uh, per... Uh, collectorssociety.com and there were a few lines that really caught me. Political discourse in the early 19th century was far more vitriolic than we have today for which this coin owes its origins. What? More vitriolic than today? The huge fight between Jackson's Democratic Party versus the Federalists resulted in coins such as this one, and in fact formed the root of the Republican Party. If you've ever seen uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda's Hamilton, think of the rap debates between Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. Even in government policy of today, you will see the fingerprints of both Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson and they had two very differing points of view. Jefferson was very tight about interpreting the Constitution. The Constitution was the central document, and that is what we have to abide by since it was agreed upon democratically. And his essential question was, are ideas being proposed constitutional or unconstitutional? Long story short, Thomas Jefferson felt that a national bank was unconstitutional. A national bank would have leadership that was appointed in a private entity instead of voted in. And that goes against the concept of checks and balances. We'll get back to Andrew Jackson and that coin, the whole point in this video, in a second. Isn't that what you said last time? But first... Let's talk a little bit about Alexander Hamilton, the father of capitalism. Now, the big elephant in the room at this time was, are the British coming back? And if they do, 
How are we going to pay for a war? Countries in Europe had national banks. And that swayed the scale towards Alexander Hamilton's ideology. And the first national bank, I believe, was chartered in 1791 on a 20-year term. Now remember, at that time, people feared return of a king. I'm stopping myself from going off on a tangent on federalism in this. I'll say, for the sake of the audience watching this, if it was up to Thomas Jefferson, those state coppers that I love so much, they would be continued. But there was a great compromise that happened. You can't have a government without a central power and states just saying, you do you. That's like having separate countries. That's not going to work. But neither is giving the reins over to any central entity without checks and balances. Now, the first bank of the United States charter ended in 1811, and it was not renewed. It was not renewed for several reasons. First, many people thought that the federal government had no constitutional right to charter a bank because the Constitution only gave Congress not a private corporation, the right to print money. Second, Britons had come to own 70% of the stock, and since the bank paid dividends in specie, think gold and silver coins, exactly what we want to find. It was feared that they would transfer the gold and silver specie back to England, thus depleting America of much-needed commodity money that served as the basis of their banknotes. Now back to Andrew Jackson and his beef with the bank. Jackson grew up on a farm in South Carolina. Remember, Thomas Jefferson, he was the essentially the alpha farmer. His ideology, his vision of the future was agricultural, agrarian. Don't be mistaken by the farming background. These two had similarities, but, oh, they were wildly different. In fact, many of the ideas in Thomas Jefferson's writing were to protect against what Andrew Jackson would become. But in terms of the Panic of 1819, Jackson, a self-made man, lost a great deal of money in the Panic of 1819, as did many Americans. After the demise of the first bank, state banks were being formed for the sole purpose of providing banknotes to its owners so that they could speculate in land prices. Here's proof you need regulation. In other words, these banks, which didn't even have depositors, were not created because there were capital to invest or to provide loans to businesses or farmers, but to simply print banknotes to give to its owners men without real capital, and who would not have been able to get a real loan based on their credit worthiness. These notes were used to buy land, subdivide the land, then sell the subdivisions to farmers at exorbitant prices. Naturally, this house of cards had to fall. People were selling air. The private leadership of the bank was looking the other way. But there's also another point in this that was very important, the point of access. There was cronyism and there was a general distrust of banks and this private institution that was at the heart of our government, at least financially speaking. At the time, there was also the rise of Supreme Court Chief Justice John Marshall. Dude essentially put the Supreme Court on the map. They were like a third wheel in checks and balances before that. And the decisions of the Supreme Court, such as the one in McCullough versus Maryland, were more along the lines of being pro-central government. Enter Senator Andrew Jackson. Bank, Mr. Van Buren, is trying to kill me, but I will kill it. I have absolutely zero doubt that he would challenge the National Bank or anyone affiliated to a duel. Election of Andrew Jackson by the common man marks a new era in American politics. People now believe that they should have control of their government. Oh, but check out that line at the bottom. The presidency should be supreme. Oh, snap. Oh, now it's time to discuss the coin. My substitute for the U.S. bank. Experiment, my currency, 
my glory with a little portrait of Andrew Jackson right here. And on the other side, credit, perish, commerce. Oops. Down with the bank, 1834, which is the exact same date on my coin. Uh, my third heat. Oh, and the uh, pig. Oh, I bet that that is representative of the corruption that Andrew Jackson wanted to execute and kill. DeWitt CE, I believe, is the mint. Uh, I'm sure somebody that uh, is watching this can help out a little bit with that because I'm not entirely sure on this part. But this was a coin that was minted for common men, perhaps by common men who were in support of leaders in the mold of Andrew Jackson. But what I love about this coin and what just geeks me out is that this is just such a transitional time in American history. It's the start of America's adolescence. This is when we were morphing into a two-party system, Democrats and Republicans. This is when the North and the South economic differences continued to widen. New states were being admitted, and the question was, are they free states or slave states? And being that presidents were elected through an electoral college, through the states and through their electors, if you lived in the South at that time, would you lean towards Thomas Jefferson's financial ideology or Alexander Hamilton's. I keep my channel politically neutral so that we can all have fun, but I will say this, and I don't say this in it with any malicious intent or any political bias. Andrew Jackson? No. Donald Trump was born of Andrew Jackson. In my own lifetime, I've heard Donald Trump say, drain the swamp, and that's a page from Andrew Jackson. Both did not want checks and balances to get in the way. Both were extremely polarizing figures. And although I disagree with the policies of both of them in some cases, I refuse to cancel either one of them. Nobody get vicious in the comments, please. You know why? Because America has proven that it can stay afloat no matter who is running the ship. And that goes back to checks and balances. It goes back to dividing the power and the George Washington precedent of limiting terms in office. To me, this coin and this country is absolute beauty. It proves that we can author items that disagree with the national policy. When we are passionate in the moment, we forget the concept. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. This coin is a reminder of just that. Try to remember that the next time that you read something or hear something that is the total opposite of your ideology. History has shown that uh, Jackson was wrong about the bank and that we did need a central institution that has morphed into the Federal Reserve uh, to be central in our monetary affairs. Then again, the Federal Reserve mints Zinkins these days. Little metal detecting joke. Jackson also forced the migration of uh, many Native Americans on the Trail of Tears. He also gave jobs to people who were loyal to him. And uh, when it came to the bank and uh, dissolving the bank, the national bank, and putting the assets into several state banks, uh, he had to fire two people before he got somebody to agree with him. So, yes, he ran the country like a general, but he also expanded democracy uh, for the common man. And, you know, that started and it led to suffrage for all people of voting age uh, in the future. It took a longer time for that. He most definitely has a complicated legacy but if there is a president that I'm absolutely fascinated with, it is Andrew Jackson. And I'm thankful to have a Jacksonian piece of history.